When there is a negative sentiment in the market and the markets are in a downward trend, one of the approaches is to invest in blue chip stocks. And the reason being that blue chip stocks are less volatile as compared to mid cap and small cap stocks. Now in this current situation, the market is in bear grip due to rising inflation that has increased the raw material prices and impacted the margins of companies. And there's a concern over US Fed interest rate hike. And on top of this, the recent Russia-Ukraine war has created global uncertainties. So if you want to make use of this fall in the market and invest in relatively less volatile stock, then you can consider investing in top blue chip stocks of India that are available at reasonable valuation. Here, please remember that valuation is a key. There are many great blue chip stocks in the market, but not every stock is available at good valuation. So in this video, I'll share the list of five blue chip stocks looking very reasonable in terms of valuation that you can consider buying now. But before you invest your money, make sure that you do your own research and do not blindly invest based on this video. And don't invest all your money as lump sum. Since we don't know how long this uncertainty in the market would last, a good strategy is to keep buying in a systematic manner on dips. All right, let's get started. So first two stocks in the list are from the banking sector. Now that the economy is recovering post COVID, banking sector would be the direct beneficiary from it. There's a huge amount of capex cycle planned in the economy and that would boost the business for banks. On top of this, there's also a fall in provisioning and bad loans. So banking sector is expected to post good numbers in 2022. But within banks, be very selective with top quality lenders that have a strong balance sheet, low NPA and focus on digitization to compete with new age fintech firms. So within this sector, my number one pick would be ICICI Bank. ICICI Bank is among the top two private banks in India and one of the most well-run banks in India. In the latest Q3 result, ICICI core operating profits have jumped 24.9% year-on-year to levels of 100.6 billion rupee. There's an improvement in its net asset quality as well and its net NPA for Q3 stood at 0.85% which is well under control. Its net interest margin stood at 3.96% and most importantly, ICICI Bank is extremely focused towards growing its digital platform. Its iMobile app not only includes the basic features of account opening, credit card, loans and investment, but you can send instant money to your contact using UPI, scan and pay, make bill payments as well as recharges. Now if you look at the revenues of ICICI Bank, it was at 59,294 crore in March 16. And then it was slightly constant for next two years, but then it saw a rise in revenues and currently it is at 92,707 crore in trailing 12 months. If you look at the profitability, it was at 10,180 crore in March 16 and then it saw fall in its profitability. But then since March 19, there's a sharp rise in profitability of ICICI Bank and in trailing 12 months, its profit stood at 22,277 crore. Now, next, if you look at the other financials, ICICI has a current price of 717 rupee. It touched a high of 867, which means there is a fall of around 17% from its peak. Apart from this, it has a market cap of around 5 lakh crore rupees and has got a ROE of 13.1%. And the debt to equity is 7. Please don't look at debt to equity. Remember, banks have a business model where they borrow money and then they pass it as a loan. So bank work on this model and debt to equity is not a right ratio in banking model. And if you look at the targets on ICICI, you can see that MK Global has given a target of 1050 and then Jefferies has given a target of 1040. So both these funds have given a target of more than 1000 rupees on ICICI, which is currently trading at levels of 717, which means there's an upside potential of more than 40% on ICICI bank. But please make sure that you don't make your buy or sell call based on these target prices. These are only for your reference purpose. Second blue chip stock from the banking sector is HDFC Bank. HDFC Bank is number one private bank in India in terms of revenue as well as profits. But unfortunately, HDFC Bank has been an underperformer for a long time now. In fact, in the last one year, HDFC Bank share price has fallen by around 8 to 10%. HDFC Bank has seen many ups and downs in the last couple of years. In October 2020, RBI imposed ban on HDFC Bank to issue new credit cards and introducing new digital products due to multiple outages in its digital banking system. This ban lasted 8 months till August 2021. It also impacted its growth in credit card business. Then it also saw a big change in leadership where Aditya Puri, the man that made HDFC Bank number one private bank of India, retired in 2020. 
So there were concerns over the new leadership. But HDFC Bank new CEO, Mr. Sashida Jagdishan has been associated with the bank since 1996 and was the CFO of the bank before joining as CEO. Now that HDFC Bank has revamped this technology platform, I believe that HDFC Bank will regain its position. In its Q3 result, HDFC Bank has posted 18% jump in its year-on-year -year profit and its net NPS also reduced to 0.37% which is among the lowest NPA in the banking sector. So I'm very optimistic about the outperformance of SDFC Bank in the future. If you look at the revenue of SDFC Bank, it was 63,162 crore in March 16 and currently at 1,32,969 crore in trailing 12 months. Look at this consistent rise in revenues of SDFC Bank. Next, if you look at the profitability, its profit stood at 12,801 crore in March 16 and currently at 36,044 crore in trailing 12 months. Look at this consistent rise in the profitability of HDFC Bank. If you look at the other financials, HDFC Bank is currently trading at levels of 1380 and it touched a high of 1725. So the stock is down around 20% from its peak and it has got a market cap of around 7.64 lakh crore and a ROE of 16.5%. Next, if you look at the targets on HDFC Bank, Jefferies has given a buy price on with a target of 2160 and it is at current levels of 1380 which means there is an upside potential of more than 50%. You can see that it says that as Jeffrey believes that SDFC Bank is set for a comeback year after an uh, underperformance and it expects 18% CGR in profit over 22 to 24 and improvement in net interest income and that is around 16 to 17% and that is the reason for re-rating. Third blue chip stock in my list is from IT sector and the reason for picking IT sector is very simple. India is a leader in the IT services and would continue to be the leader globally. Indian IT companies have the required talent pool with the right skill set. And of course, Indian IT companies are much more cost efficient as compared to global players due to its low cost workforce. And within the IT sector, the large cap IT companies are placed in a sweet spot due to huge availability of talent pool, strong and experienced leadership and a proven track record of decades with good relationship with global giants. So within the large cap IT sector, I would pick HCL Technologies. Now you might ask, why not TCS or Infosys? So all these three companies are among the top players in the Indian IT sector with good growth, high profitability, negligible debt levels and huge amount of free cash flow for investment in future technologies. But one key difference is valuation. HCL has a P ratio of 27, whereas TCS latest P ratio is 34 and Infosys P ratio is 33. So HCL has a much better valuation among all these three companies. And more importantly, HCL has won many new big contracts and has a very strong deal pipeline which is growing quickly. And this would get reflected in the coming quarters. If you look at the revenues of HCL Technologies, it was 31,136 crore in March 16 and from there it jumped to 82,695 crore in trailing 12 months. Again, there is a consistent rise in the revenues of HCL Technologies. Now if you look at the profits of HCL Tech, it has grown from 5,602 crore in March 16 to current level of 11,008 crore in trailing 12 months. Now one of the reasons why there is a stagnation between March 2021 and trailing 12 months is because in March 2021, HCL Tech gave away profits worth 700 crore to its employer. And one of the reasons why trailing 12 month profits are not high is because of in fall in your margins, which is due to your increase in employee cost. If you look at the other financials of HCL Tech, you can see that it is currently trading at levels of 1114. It touched a high of 1378. So again, it is down 20% from its peak and it has got a market cap of around 3.202 lakh crore. And uh, again, it has got a ROC of 25.7%, which is brilliant. ROE of 19.8%, which is brilliant. Debt to equity of 0.1, which is almost negligible. So all in all, you can see there's a free cash flow of 34,932 crore. So financially, HCL Tech is looking very solid. And if you look at the targets, Motilal Oswal has given a target of 1,690 rupees on HCL Tech. And currently, HCL is trading at levels of 1,110, which means there's an upside potential of more than 50% on HCL Tech. Number four blue chip stock is Reliance Industries. The reason is simple. Reliance Geo is a leader in Indian telecom sector and the Indian telecom is one of the fastest growing market in the world due to affordable smartphones and low cost internet. 
since the government has also a lot of focus on digitization, telecom sector would see huge growth in the future. And remember that telecom is a highly capital intensive business. So there is a high entry barrier in this sector and Reliance Geo would benefit from this entry barrier. Then Reliance is also among the leader in the Indian retail business. Right from Reliance Fresh to Reliance Digital to Reliance Print to Reliance Smart and the list goes on. Moreover, now Reliance Retail is also penetrating into the e-commerce retail with Reliance Geomart. And again, the organized retail sector in India would see huge growth due to increasing consumer spending. Not only this, Reliance has now also forayed into green energy business which is the future of energy. Reliance has recently signed an MOU with Gujarat for a total investment of 5.95 lakh crore over the span of 10 to 15 years to set up 100 gigawatts renewable energy power plant and green hydrogen ecosystem development. Last year, Mukesh Ambani has already announced the setup of 4 giga factories in Jamnagar to build an entire ecosystem around renewable energy production and transmission. Again, green energy production requires huge investment and hence it has a significantly high entry barrier. So all in all, Reliance is all set to benefit from all its three businesses of telecom, retail and green energy and all three sectors have high entry barrier. So Reliance is among the top blue chip stock to invest for long term wealth creation. If you look at the revenues of Reliance industry, it was at 2.72 lakh crore in March 16 and from there it is at 6.42 lakh crore in trailing 12 months. Again, there is a good rise in profitability, although there was a slight fall, but again there is a good rise. If you look at the profits of Reliance, the profits have jumped from 29,745 crore in March 16 to 57,729 crore in trailing 12 months. Again, there is a consistent rise in the profitability of Reliance Industries. And if you look at the other financials, it is currently trading at levels of 2400 and it touched a high of 2750, which means Reliance is down around 12% from its peak and it's got a market cap of around 16.2 lakh crore and uh, apart from this it has got a ROC of 8.19% and ROE of 7.97% and debt to equity of 0.36 and if you look at the targets Morgan Stanley has maintained an overweight rating on stock with a target price of 2926 which means from current levels of 2400 Reliance has an upside potential of around 20%. Number 5 stock is from the infrastructure sector, it is LNT. For the Indian economy to grow, it has to focus on infrastructure and Indian government has a lot of focus on infrastructure building including the highways, flyovers, rail network, airport ports and so on. In fact, in the recent budget also, the government has clearly focused on capex to build the infrastructure in India. And one company that is the leader in this sector is LNT. It has been among the leader in various sectors including construction, heavy engineering, mining machinery, defense, defense ship building, metallurgy and so on. So it is not just only involved in building roads and flyovers but also involved in quite complex projects including power, defense, heavy engineering, hydrocarbon and so on. Just to give you an idea of LNT scale, it has an order book of Rs 3.4 lakh crore. So yes, it is not just lakh or crore, it is 3.4 lakh crore. That's the order book of LNT and that has grown by 18% year on year. So LNT has got multi-year revenue visibility. Out of this, 75% order are from India and 25% are from other countries. In short, the future of infra is bright and LNT is the most preferred partner with a deep moat of strong leadership and years of experience. If you look at the revenues of LNT, it was 1.01 lakh crore in March 16 and touched a high of 1.51 lakh crore in trailing 12 months. So there is a good rise in the profitability although the growth is not that high. And if you look at the profits, look at the sharp increase in profitability year on year. It was at 4,281 crore in March 16 and currently at 8,341 crore in trailing 12 months. Now one of the reasons in fall in profitability is due to increase in taxation. And another reason is this was an exceptional year with an increase of 8,000 crore worth of other income. And if you look at the other financials of LNT, it is currently trading at levels of around 1800. It touched a high of 2079. So stock is down around 14% from its peak and it has got a market cap of 2.52 lakh crore, ROC of 15.3%, ROE of 19.3%. Of course, it has got a high debt levels because it is into a very capital intensive business. And if you look at the targets on LNT, Jefferies has maintained a buy call 
and the target price is 2675 rupee currently lnt is trading at levels of 1800 which means there is an upside potential of more than 50 percent on lnt so in this video we discuss the top five blue chip stock with solid fundamentals and a very robust financial the list include icsa bank hdfc bank reliance hcl and lnt all these companies are among the leader in their respective sector with a very strong economic mode and above all they are all currently available at a very attractive valuation stock market has already corrected quite a lot recently and that has made these stocks very attractive in terms of valuation so at current levels these stocks have a very favorable risk reward ratio any further fall in the stock market would make them even more attractive since nobody can time the market and predict the bottom i would suggest investing in a systematic manner and keep buying on dips eventually when the markets will recover these blue chip stocks will certainly bounce back and reward the investors that remain invested during the tough time i hope that as a fundamental investor you are utilizing this correction in the stock market as an opportunity to invest in quality stock at discounted levels so which is your favorite blue chip stock to invest in current market fall let me know in the comments and i keep saying that the best investment you can make is investment in knowledge so if you want to learn more about stock fundamental analysis or everything about money management you can explore my online course i'll see you next video till then take care